Hello viewers, episode 62 of KSP to Mars here, I'm Lorenzo and today we're visiting Hephaestus in orbit, delivering a can of fuel and then we will take it on its way to Venus, where it hopefully will land. First things first though, and that is obviously delivering set fuel to one of its docking ports. This should be straightforward because the vessels are small and the docking ports are just on the outside for a change, so everything should be easy going. Let's have a look at that docking. Now one thing that actually may present a little bit of a problem is that I just shot the Hephaestus into orbit without taking any consideration of launch windows to Venus. I've been occupied with the Prometheus that was flying to the Sun, which obviously doesn't need a launch window, but yeah, rendezvousing with a planet kind of does. So I had a look at the Kerbal Alarm Clock here, and hmm, a second ago I added that alarm. Let's have a look at doing that again. Kerbin to Eve. And that happens according to the... Ah, right, it was just minimized. That happens in 264 days. Yeah, so, and as you can see, we are first up with the Prometheus again for another burn to lower its solar orbit. So after this docking, I'm going to actually disable the, uh, the Hephaestus' nuclear reactor and proceed with this burn there and then after that I might give you an update on that or might switch back here I've not decided yet there is some fair amount of real time that will happen in between those two I hope to fin be able to finish the Prometheus's burn in about an hour or maybe two and then we can of course get that exciting science back all right first things first though let's do this docking we are on a good approach it's many videos these days are involve docking in some kind of way. I'm just going to put it at 0 0.05 meters per second and fine-tune that with RCS bursts. Uh, it, it was better when I then... Ah, now it's fine-tuned. Let's add some time warp to the mix. Oh, that makes things abundantly clear. Uh, this docking port is on the rear. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> okay, RCS on. Let's reverse course instead. <laughs> Yep, still pro at rocket science here. How are you guys doing? <laughs> right, going the proper way this time. Perhaps times f three time warp is appropriate. More better than ten at any rate. So let's now. F Ooh, we're there already. Mm, that was a bit faster than expected. Right, so that's a wonderful docking messed up once more. Let's. Uh, yeah. This is not great. This is not great. Okay, okay, l just like in last episode, let me just reset for another attempt. Okay, kids, there we are again. Lesson learned, that's what you get for hubris and talking while doing delicate docking operations. And let's see if I can do this on the second go. Of course, I'm going to scrub a little bit of that speed. And just in the attitude, just a bit. While I'm adjusting, I'm, I only tend to make things a lot worse. That's pretty sure that's not what the point of adjustments are. But nevertheless, it seems to be going well this time around. Eh, close enough, maybe? Is it? Yes. Looks like it is. Turn off SAS and RCS. Um, come on, engage. There we are. Very nice unbalanced ship like this, but fortunately all we are here for is replenishing some liquid fuel. These tanks are half drained. Fortunately we carry... I didn't actually do some calculations. I think I'm carrying enough to replenish all the tanks. I should at any rate. And I made this refueling tank so that it can actually deorbit itself. So we're leaving no space junk today, which is of course good. Although I did just leave a full upper stage of the booster in space, but that wasn't on video so that doesn't count. Yeah, it's run me flat out of things to say while doing the fuel transfer. I imagine astronauts get bored while transferring fuel. Although, it's not really happening that often in reality. Actually, never, I don't think. When I, when have spacecraft ever had to transfer fuel on orbit? I don't think that ever happened. The resupplying of the ISS, maybe that counts, although I don't really think it does. Right, anyway, the Hephaestus is now fully fueled. Hey, we might be able to use the engineer on this vessel to give us a Delta V readout. 
of course not because that would be silly it wouldn't it would work for the the fusion engine it doesn't right so check check double check do we have full tanks I don't know what else to check we have full tanks we can leave and we will and dock switch to this and we oh crash it the other way it is now of course horribly unbalanced because it just drains some of the fuel but not all of it we even have some oxidizer and still a lot of liquid fuel left as well I might just I might not deorbit this and just leave it floating here I mean it still has a thousand units of liquid fuel this could be what uh, what ends up being the saving grace of this baby when it returns because then it could ex establish earth orbit grab this and use that to to safely land yeah that's a wonderful idea okay then all we have to do now is EVA their Enfall here and have him shut down the reactor look he's on the side initially when I was making this craft the command pod was in the center but that was very difficult with the uh, with the ladder so he um, because of course we're going to Venus which has appreciable gravity that means you can't just um, you can't just jet back back up to the hatch. If you go to the ground, you better have a ladder to get back up your spaceship. I wonder how well this will do in an EVE environment. Uh, Venus environment, not EVE, damn it. Uh, yeah, come on. Manual shutdown. We don't need no power. We don't need no power. Right on. So that will, of course, take several weeks to spool down or spooling down is probably not the right terminology, but to cool down, to properly shut off. Other way around, damn it. Let's get back in there. And that will allow us to switch to our good friend Prometheus. Which is due, well, it's not quite due yet, but it is. it will be due for its periapsis lowering burn far before the Hephaestus is actually due for its Venus insertion burn and yesterday last episode I talked a bit about options for the future about well what kind of videos to make and how to deal with dwindling time to make wonderful videos in abundance and there's some some other matters I would like your opinion on if you have watched all the previous episodes you will probably remember that there are quite a few unfinished projects there is a guy stranded in the remnants of a base on the moon there's a three space stations which have people in them and well we have the, um, the the lost science probes that don't currently serve a function if there's any of these projects that you would particularly like to see picked up on well consider yourself a lobbying statesman or whatever and you can submit a request and then I might very well do that my somewhat end game goal for this series is to get a warp ship and with that to pick up some of the stray probes the ones that are heading out system are they still even visible I don't know probably not the ones that are heading out system the ones that are otherwise this is not important the ones that are otherwise lost these photon sailor maybe that can then well you know just for posterity retrieve some of the old probes and take them home I think that would be cool anyway and here we are at Apoapsis, ready for the orbit lowering burn of approximately a bazillion kilometers per second. I will set about doing that. Actually, let me show you a little bit of how that goes. It has been shown in previous episodes. Oh, damn it, I forgot one important thing, which was to add, shut down the reactors. Oh, I actually did that before. Wonderful. So now we actually only need to activate the reactors. Gee, past me is wonderfully smart because that disabling of the reactors early on, that just saved us a lot of fuel, about a year's worth actually. Oh dear, his jetpack is rocketing him off to places. So, of course we need to activate these fission reactors. Let's see, manual restart. And then with the power from those fission reactors, we can... Uh, we can then oof, we can then start the fusion reactor. I'm wondering, in the tech tree, it said about uh, upgrading these electric generators, and of course, because they unlocked the tech, any new reactors, uh, any new generators will in fact be upgraded. But it said the 
existing reactors have to be upgraded manually. So let's have a look if I can do something about that. Well, not with an EVA, I don't seem to be able to. Let's try a radiator. Because if I can upgrade these radiators, it's not going to make a difference for the power output because the reactors are, are, are unchanged, but it will make the energy generation uh, more efficient, well, which will make a bit of a change to the power output, and it will make the reactors cooler, and it will just make the Kerbals happy knowing that they have uh, more advanced technology on board, but I'm not sure if I can do that. And we'll see from the ship. It doesn't appear possible from the EVA at any rate. So let's head back on board and see about Deactivate generator? No, it doesn't seem... Doesn't s ah, I have a retrofit option here. Let's see what happens if I click that. What well, just... that just fixed it. Well, that just made it a graphene radiator. That's nice. Let's keep doing that. Maybe this will do it if I deactivate it first. No. Well, let's just retrofit these radiators, then my generators will run much more efficient. Because now the heat radiation is massively outscaled, massively out of proportion with the actual heat generation. So that is wonderful. I think that's got them all. Look, the waste heat is now not even registering on the scale. That means the generators can run at full efficiency, which means that I can maybe do slightly longer burns. So, wonderful. Let's have a look at that. Our engines are still properly throttled to half thrust, and I'm going to just light them. Well, maybe it's placebo effect, but I'm thinking that my generators are running more efficiently that I can do longer burns. Although, I've never timed this with a stopwatch, so... That might just be wishful thinking. Oh god, I wish I had bigger reactors on board the ship now. For longer sustained thrusts. Yeah. Everyone wants longer sustained thrusting ability. Is that a good bombshell to end, them, to end the show on? I'll just leave that up in the air for a bit. Prometheus doesn't have the thrusting capability of Hephaestus. Could be a Greek tragedy, that. A Greek tragedy involving spaceships. Clearly, clearly I've run out of things to say. I'm doing these burns and I've instantly become super, super bored. So I will not subject you any further to this. Rather than a full-fledged episode, consider this sort of a status update. And on the next one, I promise I will have one of two things for you. Either we have interesting things with the Prometheus here, or we will set off with Hephaestus to Venus, but no more intermittent in between stuff. S actual interesting things will happen, I promise you that. So for now, thanks for watching. Leave your comments on things that you would like to see or would hate to see uh, below. And as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, do so, uh, because even though the frequency will go down a little bit, there will definitely be lots and lots more videos in the near and distant future. This was Lorenzo, thanks for watching, goodbye.